There's something really interesting going on with the RX 7600 since launch. I want to talk about it, and I want to talk about it in the context of the Azerox Steel Legend 7600. 8 gigabytes. Everybody says 8 gigabytes is not enough love. Okay, that makes sense. You could get the 7900 XTX. Okay, that's, that's maybe a little overkill. Let's take a look. Okay, so the RX 7600 Steel Legend from ASRock it's a pretty special card, and we're gonna take a closer look at it. This is an AIB version of the 7600, which means that ASRock has poured their engineering know-how and love into this version of the card. Physically, it's much larger than the reference version of the 7600. In fact, the reference version from AMD of the 7600 is the only really like small form factor compatible GPU that I've seen, but there's an interesting, I think, option with the RX 7600 and that is an upgrade path from something older because it doesn't require a you know fire breathing power supply and it actually will work pretty well in your older you know 8th or 9th or 10th generation Intel system even older AMD systems and we'll take a look at that in a second but this card it's large but not overly large it'll fit in OEM systems it'll fit in normal desktop systems even if you didn't necessarily build it yourself and the power supply requirements are pretty modest. Even though this is a 7600, it does have DisplayPort 2.1, which is awesome if you're using this for light gaming and heavy productivity. Three DisplayPort 2.1 plus HDMI 2.1. You could run a lot of pixels with those kind of pixel clocks. Also, software updates from AMD have made that a more pleasant experience if you're running multiple high resolution, high refresh rate displays, or if you're doing KVM testing, you know, just just depends. You, you do you, but sometimes you need a cheap source of DisplayPort 2.1 connections and ah, what are you going to do? Now the one thing that will come up in all of your searching and researching for GPUs is, is 8 gigabytes of VRAM enough in 2023? And the short answer is no, but the long answer is, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, it depends on you, but yeah. You see, most people are not buying a GPU every year, or even every two years, or even every three years. That's okay, you shouldn't feel bad about that. That's completely fine. If you're building a new machine, you've got a budget for your CPU, your GPU, your video card, and all of the other components. And sometimes it makes sense if you're building a machine primarily for gaming that you put most of the, the dollar budget into the GPU. And given the whole cost of the system, moving a couple of hundred dollars around so that you could get you know, a four or $500 GPU versus a sub $300 GPU in the, you know, the equation for the whole cost of the system, that's more doable. But if you're just looking at GPUs by themselves, the RX 7600 coming in at under $300 and since launch, the pricing has fluctuated a little bit. Availability is, is happening generally, at least in US retailers. I'm sure it varies a little bit depending on where you are. But for a GPU of this class and this horsepower at sub $300 in this market, this is a really good deal. <laughs> this is a crazy good deal if you're just looking at comparing to NVIDIA cards, especially with AMD's updates. Now, I know, I know, it's, it's always like, hey, AMD's got the software update. But listen, if you look at the ecosystem of all of the GPUs ever, AMD is not doing badly. They're doing really well. Their driver team is firing on all cylinders and it's not just the drivers. It's also Hyper RX. It's also Rage Mode. It's also FSR3, which we are very, very close to, but the time I'm doing this video, it's not quite ready yet. But we have FSR2 in a bunch of games. We have a bunch of launch day, day zero optimizations. And so AMD showing us that it can consistently execute and deliver a reliable gaming experience. Uh, you know, gives you confidence in recommending that product. And I've been running AMD 6000 and 7000 series GPUs in my home machine for two years, three years. So Baldur's Gate, Starfield, you know, the launch stuff that I'm playing is, and sometimes not even with an updated driver. So, you know, sometimes I'm like, ah, I really should update adrenaline. Ah, I don't know. And I, but it's, it's been fine. And, uh, I'm trying to think if I, I, I don't think that I've personally experienced any issues whatsoever. I've been able to create some issues for the reviews, 
by doing unholy things or doing weird testing, but generally things have been really outstanding. You know, bravo and kudos to the AMD driver team. Uh, if you look at Intel, you can see that Intel has come a long way with their GPUs as well. And at the low end, Intel may soon be a much more serious threat to AMD, especially in the sub $300 class GPUs. You see a lot of people in the peanut gallery saying, ah, oh, finally, we're going to have something that is going to lower the price of, of GPUs and be awesome. Intel is spending a crazy amount of money to try to become competitive in this market. And the interesting thing from the peanut gallery is Intel actually has really solid hardware. Like the engineering of the hardware is very good. But whether that engineering lines up with gaming perfectly, it does and it, and it doesn't. Like, I'm very impressed with Intel GPUs, but the reality is that they're still lagging behind on their counterparts. And there's, there's quite a distance from Intel to AMD, whereas AMD and NVIDIA, in terms of driver quality, they are basically at parity. Ray tracing is always the thing that everybody jumps to. It's like, oh, there's not parity for ray tracing. That's true, but I don't think that anybody is using ray tracing outside of 4090 and maybe 4080 owners. Like if you've got an RTX 4090 or an RTX 4080 and you're running ray tracing, great. You paid well over $1,000 for your GPU. Well, maybe not in the case of a 4080, it was probably pretty close. And the ray tracing performance on 4090 is, is really cool and it is really cool technology to be able to see. But RDNA 3 does have ray tracing, you can enable it. And depending on the scenario, it's not a bad gaming experience. Ray tracing on low in Cyberpunk 2077 is entirely attainable, especially on higher end RDNA 3 GPUs. The reality is that ray tracing for anything other than the highest tier cards from anybody is not really a thing. Like you're not going to have, you're giving up so much of your gameplay experience that it's hard for me to sit here with a straight face and say, oh yeah, you could totally do that. If you're doing ray tracing in older titles, like ancient titles, like Ray Traced Quake was a fun, nostalgic revisit, then okay, maybe. But I just don't see that happening. Anyway, that's enough rambling. On with the benchmarks. Now, I wanted to do two things different with our benchmark comparison. One, I've included the performance of the RX 7600 as it was at the time we did the RX 7600 review. This shows how far the drivers have come. 90% of this is drivers, some of this is game optimization. Obviously, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, an ancient game from the dawn of time. The improvements in overall frame rate as well as 1% lows, that is most likely down to a driver update because we don't have detailed change logs for either drivers or game updates. It could be down to either one. We recently took a look at the RX 7800 XT. It just launched. It's probably the best bang for the buck, but it costs more. And we had strange issues from F1 2023. And in the beginning of the test, it was like, this isn't happening. And then with 7800 XT, it was happening. There was a game update that caused problems. And after retesting on other you know, competitor GPUs, the issues were also happening there. And so driver updates and game updates sometimes don't mesh. That's not an AMD thing. That's not an Nvidia thing. That was actually a game thing in the case of F1 2023. And so, things move on. Borderlands 3, sometimes the performance is all over the place. Sometimes the game gets an update. Sometimes there's, there's DLC. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. But the performance today is dramatically way better than the performance a while ago. And we're doing testing at 1080p and 1440p. And on the side, I also do testing at 3440 by 1440 in ultra wide resolution. The 7600 is a surprisingly competent card for 3440 by 1440 at like high and between high and ultra. Ultra at 3440 by 1440 on all games is not always super amazing. The Callisto protocol. The Callisto protocol is also really interesting for thermal performance. I'll talk about that in a second. But the Callisto protocol performance, especially when we're talking about smoothness of gameplay and, and that sort of stuff, is dramatically way better today in September of 2023 than it was when the RX 7600 launched. So whether that's down to game updates or driver updates, I couldn't tell you. But again, dramatically way better. We see this in a lot of our other benchmarks and we see this in a lot of our other games. For other game performance and looking at, you know, 1440p, if you want to do 100 FPS at 1440p in pretty much any AAA title today, you can do it with the RX 7600 as long as you don't run over 8 gigabytes of VRAM. It is entirely possible to do that with high and ultra level detail textures because 
there are 24 gig VRAM GPUs in the market and game developers want to show what their engines are capable of. And eight is a lot less than 24. But that doesn't mean that you're gonna have a bad gaming experience. At high and medium high textures, the game fidelity is very, very good. And you may still be able to use uh, very detailed textures, but with upscaling technology, it depends on the game. Sometimes it's like, no, it's always going to, the super high resolution texture is always gonna use that amount of VRAM. It doesn't ultimately matter a whole lot what resolution you're playing at, but with some game engines, it does matter. And it may be because the game engine under the hood is not loading a 4K texture when you're playing it. A 1080p which would make logical sense but you don't know what the game engine is doing under the hood so yeah now thermals steel legend 7600 what you're paying for is thermals here the th the hot spot and overall temperature delta versus the reference card is breathtaking the the the, the small uh, 7600 from amd ooh, it runs a little warm but it's also really tiny and it can also be really tiny in a physically challenged environment of our asrock desk mini Meanwhile, the Steel Legend, there's a quiet rush of air and a quiet hum, and it doesn't even really get super hot until you go rage mode. And then it runs fine. So, yay! Now, let's talk about AMD software update HyperRX. HyperRX, uh, listen, I just want to sit down and play a game. You can click a button, and it says, Here's the games that you have installed. Let's load the optimal settings for these games. And you do that and then you have a more enjoyable game experience. It enables stuff to try to lower the lag and it does mess with the visual fidelity settings, but it gives you control over how it's messing with the visual fidelity settings. And it'll let you hit power targets or it'll let you hit frame rate targets or it'll let you optimize for what you want to optimize for. But there's a whole bunch of different features of the card that do that. And without you having to learn how those features work in the particulars of those tweaks and so on and so forth, you can just let the software do it. It still gives you control and it still shows you what you're doing, but I like this as kind of an easy mode to just get more performance. So like in some of our benchmarks, you know, staying above 100 FPS at 1440p was sometimes a little bit of a challenge for the RX 7600, but with Hyper RX, you can do that. But it makes it hard to present benchmark and comparison numbers for that because then we're not really doing an apples to apples comparison. If we're using FSR2, we're not really rendering the game at the same resolution. So the FSR2 uh, you know, benchmark results visually is a little different, uh, but it's better performance, but it's not an apples to apples comparison. So I frame generation technologies like in DLSS3 and uh, from NVIDIA and FSR3, which is coming and not out yet uh, from AMD, those are different technologies. FSR2 and DLSS2, different technologies, different visual output it's kind of important to just look at the raw horsepower of the game, but also the gaming experience. And the gaming experience is also a little bit subjective. Different places will review different games differently. I just sit down and play the game and experiment with Linux and do that, that sort of fun stuff. So for me, it, you know, it's a, it's a little different experience. It's a little bit more subjective, I guess, is the way that I would describe that. So keep that in mind. Take that with a grain of salt. Do your research and, you know, look at everything from, from everywhere, basically. But the thermal solution here from, from ASRock is very good, and the software solution from AMD is very good. And so with the software solution plus the thermal solution, the card will generally turbo a little higher. It'll generally try to clock its memory a little higher. And that's what you see in the artificial benchmarks. You look at Time Spy and 3D Mark, and it's like, wow, these numbers are you know a lot higher than reference. And it's like, well, it doesn't necessarily translate to games, but it does give the card more headroom to boost and do its thing when it needs it. Now, Rage Mode overclocks with this card and this cooling solution. You can achieve significant clock improvements on the card, but that's going to vary. You know, your Rage Mode on your card might not be a lot better than non-Rage Mode. In my particular case, we could go from 100 to 110 FPS you know, like in a challenging game like Callisto Protocol. It's like, oh, I, wanna, I still want to keep it on high. I don't want to use FSR. I want to push it a little bit more. Okay, Rage Mode. Rage Mode was able to get me there. That's cool stuff. Overall, pretty solid engineering from ASRock. Pretty happy with the Steel Legend line. I like to see Steel Legend, like the philosophy of it. It's like, hey, we're going to try to give you a card that doesn't have a lot of the bling and a lot of the extras, but still performs really well. Ta-da! Steel Legend. Okay, I could get behind that. So I mentioned upgraders, and this is also a really interesting benchmark to take a look at. If you have an older machine, like say an 8700K or you know a 9900K, you're not 
going to enjoy the full Gen 4 benefits. These cards, this class of cards, only uses eight lanes, eight PCI Express lanes, which limits the available bandwidth to the card. Now, because the card is not mind-numbingly fast, it doesn't matter because PCIe Gen 4, 4 by 8 lanes, is the same as 16 Gen 3 lanes. PCIe Gen 4 is twice as fast as Gen 3, so it doesn't, doesn't really matter. But what if you wanted to use this in an older platform? Your motherboard's only going to run a Gen 3, that 8700K or the 9900K or even, you know, even AMD processors that should support, AM4 processors that should support PCIe Gen 4 on some motherboards for reliability or other reasons, they'll actually have a PCIe slot that runs a Gen 3 instead of Gen 4. You can see that in GPU-Z if you're, you're wanting to make sure. Then yes, you have less bandwidth going to the card, and that will make a difference in performance. But, as you can see from our benchmarks, generally at 100 FPS, you're only losing 5, maybe 10 FPS. And this is again another driver improvement that has improved with time. Uh, when Spider-Man first launched, you were looking at like 50% performance. That's an outlier. That's the exception to the rule, not the rule. It's like, oh, if you try to use this card on a Gen 3 platform, it's just, it's not going to work. And uh, it's, it works, but it's just glacial. It's disproportionately slow compared to what it should be. And this is just because the card was shuffling a lot of things from system memory on the bus, and the extra slowdown there really made a difference. So if you can get everything you needed loaded into the card, then the bus interface speed doesn't matter quite as much. But if the card is constantly have to re uh, having to reference stuff from the system, then the performance does actually matter. And we see that where we are today in September of 2023, that generally PCIe Gen 3 versus Gen 4 with this card doesn't matter too much, whether that's 1080p or 1440p, which is a very nice thing to see. It's a great card for upgraders. And I think for upgraders, the 8 gig VRAM limitation is less important. 8 gigs of VRAM, if you're, if you're rocking an 8th gen CPU, that's going to be your problem long before 8 gigs of VRAM is your problem. And if you're on AM4 and you're not rocking a 5000 series CPU, that's probably a very low cost first upgrade for you. You could move to a CPU with vCache and that will run really, really well with the highest tiers of GPUs. This one will run great too. So maybe you can pick up a 3000 series uh, AMD CPU on eBay or the secondary market if you've got something even older than that. If you're on Zen 1 or Zen 2, even those, those original launch motherboards, most of them have a BIOS update. So install your BIOS update first. But most of them today, check the manual and the manufacturer website, can upgrade to 5000 series, you know, modern AM4 processors. That is an easy low cost upgrade. You could get that plus a GPU like this and that would be pretty amazing. But I was delighted to see that generally PCIe Gen 3 versus Gen 4 doesn't make a huge difference with the RX 7600. So that's nice. If you're looking for an easy upgrade for a relative, you know, birthday, Christmas, something like that, and you don't really know about their power supply, but you know that they've got an older GPU, RX 7600 is also pretty safe in that respect. So between PCIe Gen 3 versus Gen 4, eh, it's probably fine. Power supply, eh, it's probably fine. This is a card you can buy to give as a gift without giving away what the gift is, if that makes sense. So that's always nice. It's like, I want to I wanna get my cousin, you know, something to upgrade his machine with. And I know he's using something that came with his, you know, 8th gen system. So you know it's old. Okay, well... This is, this is your magic solution. I'm Waldo, this is Level 1. I'm signing out. You can find me in the Level 1 forums. Mm -hmm.